Hello, on today's Phil and Friends, my friends and I are going to show you how you can take an ordinary inexpensive mini refrigerator and use it to generate ultra low humidity air that you can use to store things like expensive camera gear or humidity sensitive 3D printer filament. Stay around and we'll show you how to do it. So it's well known that many types of 3D printer filament are sensitive to humidity. If they absorb too much humidity from the air, they won't print well. The moisture will bubble out as you're printing it and it will ruin your print. So many people store their 3D printer filament in a low humidity environment to keep it dry. I went and built this case with doors on it that I can put 3D printer filament in it and automatically then feed it from this cabinet into my 3D printer. It's, it's quite um, reliable, it's quite airtight, so it seals out the humidity well. But I still need to remove the humidity from within the cabinet. And because the door opens and shuts, I get new humidity in there all the time. Now, one of the most common ways that people remove humidity from 3D printer boxes is to use a desiccant like silica gel. Here's about a kilogram of silica gel desiccant. This is a material that you frequently see in packages you get in the mail. Uh, it has the property that once it's dried out in an oven, it will then absorb humidity from the air for a while. So I bought a kilogram of that, put it in the cabinet, and what I discovered that in my lab environment, which typically sits around 50 to 60% humidity, today it's running a little high because we've had rain, so it's closer to 60%, but typically 50 to 55%, that this silica gel desiccant could lower the humidity in this cabinet about 10 degrees, so say from 55 to 45% humidity. And that's something that's an important reduction, but not as much as I would like to see. Furthermore, this desiccant gets full of moisture, and in this case it changes color from blue to pink to let me know that it's full. And I found I was having to regenerate this desiccant by putting it in an oven every week or so, which is kind of more work than I wanted to do. So I was looking for a better way to not only reduce the humidity even lower, but to make it a more automated process. Now, the first thing I tried was a commercial off-the-shelf dehumidifier that you can buy. And many of these are sold, and they use something called a peltier junction within them to cool the air. The reason they cool the air is the way most dehumidifiers cool the air is by lowering the air temperature below the dew point of water, like in this glass of water here, where you see condensation on the outside of the glass. The moisture in the air will condense out on whatever's colder than the dew point. So uh, the way dehumidifiers work is they use something to cool the air. And in the case of many inexpensive dehumidifiers, they use one of these. It's called a Peltier Junction. It's a semiconductor device. You put electricity in it. One side gets hot. The other side gets cold. And you can actually, if you operate it properly, get the cold side to below freezing. Now these commercial off-the-shelf dehumidifiers use one of these. And so I bought one, put them in the box, and I found that the humidity could get down in around the mid 30% range, and but no lower. And so I did a little math and ran some of the equations on humidity, and I figured out why the humidity doesn't go any lower than the mid 30s. And that is, uh, when you look at uh, the equations for uh, dew point, you realize that if you cool the air down to five degrees centigrade, and then heat it back up again to room temperature, the relative humidity will be about 39%. So somewhere between zero and 5%, you're gonna get relative humidity when it's warmed up again in the 30% range, which is what these commercial dehumidifiers do. So why doesn't it go any lower than that? Well, it's because to get it lower than 30%, you need to cool the air below zero degrees centigrade, which would mean they would have freezing in these devices and they would have to go through a thaw and defrost cycle, which they don't want to mess with in one of these simple devices. So I said, well, I could probably do better than that if I build my own uh, Peltier Junction dehumidifier. And that's what I did. I went and got a Peltier Junction and 3D printed a case around it with a big heat sink on it and put some fans on it to blow air in and out and a power supply to power the whole thing and adjust the speed of the fans. And lo and behold, it did work. It did, in fact, reduce the humidity below 30%. I found using this device 
and adjusting the fan speed so that I was getting frost buildup on the cooling fins, I could get the humidity in about the 20-25% range, which wasn't bad. I did find two disadvantages with this approach. One was, in order to cool the backside of the Peltier Junction enough to make it freeze, you've got to blow a lot of air across it. So it was very noisy running in my lab. Secondly, I found these Peltier Junctions burn out quite frequently. When you crank them up so that they'll actually freeze on one side, they're not very reliable. And I was, fi I was finding that about every six months they were burning out. So I started looking for a better solution that would enable quieter operation and even lower uh, humidity levels, which meant I needed to f get the air substantially below zero degrees. So I came up with the idea of using an inexpensive mini refrigerator, which comes in with a compressor that can uh, freeze the refrigerated uh, freezer compartment to below zero degrees. And I hope by using this approach and adjusting the airflow carefully, I could remove more of the moisture from the air than I could with any of these other methods. So I went out and bought a simple small refrigerator and started to use it. Let's see how me and my friends put it together into a very efficient dehumidifier. I went and found a bigger drain pan that would catch all the water that was dripping off the freezer compartment while it defrosted. I then waxed it and the freezer compartment to make sure that all the little drips of water drained off quicker during the defrost cycle. I also put a drain tube in the drain pan and routed it outside of the refrigerator. So my storage cabinet with its automatic dehumidifier is working great. It's keeping the humidity in the cabinet less than 5% almost all the time, even if I'm opening and closing the door quite a bit. Um, it runs silently in the background and automatically defrosts itself on a daily basis. So I hope this has proved to be interesting and helpful to other people. And me and my friends say thank you for watching. Bye-bye.